Hello, good day and welcome to Google Language Programming and today we're going to be setting up our programming environment for the Mac OS. We're going to start by downloading the Git version control software. Now the links to where to get the tool, Git, Golang and Visual Studio Code which is the ID we'll be using. For all three of these tools are in the description below. So let's start by downloading Git. Just as in previous videos, I speed up the video in some places and even slow it down in others. But the end result is um, you will want to pause the video and maybe even slow it down um, in, you know, to see what I'm doing for some of the things. But basically, I just speed up the places that are boring, like while it's installing. So just FYI there. Now, if it doesn't start automatically, um, when you visit, click on download for your platform, um, so it's okay every time but Mac, but if it doesn't start automatically, then you want to click the um, download automatically button and then you'll get um, the source for the screen and then eventually it's going to download. Now I have a plugin issue with um, Fire, um, with Flash, so, but other than that, it should download and then you just save it to your system and then you let it download. Then we're going to switch over and we want to download Golang. And so this is the Go language tool set. Uh, there are several tools that are available and when you do the installation, including the compile and a bunch of other things we're going to see later. And so you just want to, again, download, download that standard stuff. I think two different there. Next, we're going to want to download Visual Studio. And so you can do a search for it or just go to visualstudio.com. And then click uh, again on download for your um, platform and you save it. And that's about it. We let those download and then we're going to go to installing in a minute. It doesn't really matter which one we start with, but um, you know, let's start here with Go. We could start with Git, but that's okay. And so let's install Go. Again, double click it. Um, this is the same as I have a previous install, and that's because I do. Um, but other than that, um, if you just click continue and type in your admin or a user with admin privileges who can install things and using my password, you can just click on install and just um, go from there. Accept the defaults and you are good to go. Um, that's pretty simple, but I will cancel it and back up because I already have it installed. I don't want to reinstall it. Um, after that's installed, you want to click um, install, let's say Git. Or if you did Git first, no, do Go, but basically same thing. Um, you double click this and um, then you try to extract the package here. You may get an error um, telling you that it's unsigned. So what you do is you hold on your option key button or alternate on the Mac. But option key in the Mac, and then you right click, and then you're gonna get this dialog box. You press open, and then now it's gonna load, and then again proceed to the installation um, just as before once it opens. Um, so you may gotta click on the mounted directory here, and then double click on it. But the procedure is pretty much the same. You're gonna be asked for you know password and so on, and same thing. Just rinse and repeat. Finish. It's time to install Go. Just double click on the zip file there and it's going to extract it. And now you can just drop it into your application directory if you like or leave it there or whatever makes sense to you. But if you drop it in the application directory, then you can just run it um, like any other application. Alright, so now that Go is installed, um, Visual Studio is installed, sorry, um, let's open it and um, run it. So if we double click on it, um, it's going to start up and we're going to be able to now install the Go plugin for Visual Studio. So um, one thing that comes in very handy is being able to start Visual Studio from the command line. So we want the code command to be in our path. So we can do this by going to the command um, palette and running the install command to have the code um, command which starts Visual Studio be added to our path and so if you just follow my screen there you'll see how to do it and after that we're going to quit Visual Studio and set up our directory for Go code. So I'm going to make a directory here to hold my um, Go code 
and I'm gonna put uh, create a directory go dash lang dash programming inside of my learn computer programming directory. So as a subdirectory of that, but you can put your directory anywhere and um, you want it. So um, feel free to use the same thing or choose something else. Either way, just create a directory for your go code. Now that you have a directory for your go code, we need to set our environmental variable. And so the environment variable we need is go path. And you can see mine is not currently set. So I need to have go path point to this directory that I want to store my go code. Now, if you're using bash, which is probably most people, um, you're going to type this, edit to your bash under that bash underscore profile file and add this line, which is export go path equals, you know, the, the first line there or whatever directory you created for your go thing. Optionally, you can also um, update your path variable so that it includes your go directory, um, go path bin directory. Now, I'll explain bin directory later. You didn't create that and you won't have to create it, but when you compile your go code or you install them rather, go put them in this bin directory and see if it's already in your path, it means that you could run those applications that you installed. Um, the other thing you notice is that I have a source directory that I created in my go blank directory. And that's where my source code is going to be and or source code I download. So um, that is a subdirectory of my go path directory. Now I'm using ZSH and um, all my ZSH plugin. So my setting goes into a different file, but if you change your shell, then you will know what where to put your thing. But for everybody else, you're probably using bash. And so the first thing is um, setting is what you're going to use. And I just learned my ZSH one. But anyway, that's it. And once you set that up, you need to exit your shell and come back in so the changes can take effect. And so if you echo go path now, it should work. And now you can change to your um, go directory. Um, what we want to do is um, continue here um, in the source directory, which I said is where you continue source. You're actually going to create another directory, which is like a repository directory, you want to think of it. And so imagine that you had a GitHub account. It doesn't matter if you don't have a GitHub.com. As a matter of fact, just create this directory called GitHub.com, even if you don't have a GitHub account. And then within there, you're going to create a directory, you know, for yourself, which is your username. Um, so for me, I'm going to create a directory called another, and that's my username. And then within another, uh, it's where I will create my projects. So the first project we're going to create is Hello World. And so I'm going to create a directory for, for that. Then I can use, um, you know, code from the command line here, because we had it installed already, um, to start the Visual Studio editor. Um, and so I'm going to type code and then have it um, load my, load up for this directory. Now inside Visual Studio, let's install the Go plugin. So I already have it installed. So when you click on this um, plugin manager at the bottom left there, you're going to see a number of plugins. The one you want to look for is Go, which is towards the bottom there. And you want to click it and then click the install button. Uh, since I already have it installed, you know, and it's updated, but for a plugin that is not installed, it's going to look like this with a green button. You just click it. Once you install it, you're going to have an enable button. So I'm going to update my Python plugin here, and then it's going to ask me to enable. I click enable and restart Visual Studio. Okay. Once I restart Visual Studio after installing the plugin, what I want to do is update my user settings. And so um, what I want is my files that I'm working on, my source files to, to be saved automatically if I lose focus, which means if I change from the ID to something else, it should automatically save. Of course, I can save by, you know, doing command S or file save, whatever. But I do want it to save automatically if I lose focus. And I'll show you that come in handy. Now, there are a couple other reason, ways you can save too. You can do auto save after delay, or you can just turn the whole auto saving off. Now, mind you, if you do auto save after a delay, you could set the delay later on with another property how long you want that to delay to be. But it's a little bit annoying just because there's something in Go with a Go plugin that automatically formats your code and you can turn that off too. We're not going to get into all that, but default is on. And you see how handy this comes in. But here I tried to use Go and it's still missing some tools. 
So I just click install all and I wait. And then after it's installed, I'm going to quit Visual Studio and start it back. Yes, uh, we got to do a lot of that to get things going. But once it come back up this time, we're finished. Actually, so we're at the end of all the setup. So now let's just start Visual Studio one more time and let's test it out. So we're going to start by creating um, application here, simple hello world, I'm going to type package, main, and uh, font, and then main, and no parameter, and then we use the FMT package, a format package, to do a print line of hello world. Now notice, as soon as I save, I do command S, um, Visual Studio reformatted my code and included that package that I'm trying to use, the FMT package. I didn't have to type that. Some could go run my code and um, you see it works. Uh, cat the code to show it out. There's no magic here. Um, so why would you want uh, Video Studio to be reformatting your code and adding the imports? Well, something you want to use the import library and instead of you having to modify it, if you just know the library you're going to use, like here I'm going to use a time library and I'm not going to cover it, I'm just going to use it. But basically I'm going to delay for five seconds and then print out another statement just by typing it because I know to use a library, I can just type the name and so on. And once I save, the import ha ha happens for me, properly formatted. Now, you want this because it helps you speed up your coding, right? The less you have to type, the better for you. And so, and even thinking about formatting, you don't have to think about how to format your code anymore. Um, Go has a formatter that just takes away all of that stuff. So, uh, less work for you really, and you should really try to embrace that style of coding. The other thing we have here is um, the Git plugin already for Visual Studio. So I'm going to do an initial check-in of my code. I initialize it and you no know, changes. And then um, I can get some more space by hiding the, the Explorer window and give me a little bit more space there. And even splitting my screen. Um, you could split, keep splitting. But anyway. That's all the setup and everything for now. So thanks for joining and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.